Well, hi, thanks so much for joining me here in my shop. Hey, I'm starting another radio journey here, where it leads, who knows, but wow, am I starting off with a fantastic looking radio. Thanks to Mr. H has asked me to check out his radio and make sure it's performing uh, the way it should. As far as I know, this is a working radio. So let's check it out and uh, see what's up. So keep looking right at the front of this thing. It's just fantastic with the, the, the design of this uh, radio. So it's a three-bander. Um, General Electric. There's no uh, markings for the knobs here, and uh, you know it has the look of uh, being, <coughs> excuse me, refinished from the original finish. But it also looks like it maybe a professional did it. I'm not sure. It just it's in great shape in any case. But the, the missing labels here, almost certainly there'd be labels under here, just like this, uh, suggest the whole thing got sanded off and, and done again. Let's see what we got here. So, okay, that's the band switch. That's the tuning. Okay, this is probably volume. Might be tone, and this would be the opposite, <coughs> tone or volume here. So that's pretty. Why so loose? Hmm. Okay. What's going on here? So it's got it's got these wires hanging out here. It's the extension of the ground wire and the antenna wire. I'm just going to cut them right off. Uh, yeah, stiff uh, single conductor wire like this. It, it's pretty stiff stuff. So you really want something a little more flexible if you're going to put an extension on like that. <coughs> Excuse me, so <coughs> take a look at the power cord. <clears throat> Looks good. Feels great. Beck electric type NPN heater cord heater cord so it's very very flexible it's probably a very good piece of wire actually for this purpose now let's take a look at the back here never mind the wire what about all the rest of this stuff here <coughs> so uh, first of all it's very clean as opposed to my uh, spider laden radio I showed you a couple days ago this uh, IF can has a top. This one, this one doesn't. That's a little odd. Hmm. You know, I'd almost think somebody like they designed this radio, and then after operating it for a while, decided it required more shielding, and this was their solution which could be applied to uh, the radios already sold. Now, it just seems a little unusual. Okay, a couple of tubes in the back there. Switch here. Let's see what it says. Records or television. This instrument is designed for use with records or television. There we go. Now we can all read it. When television broadcast becomes available in your locality, a general electric television attachment plugged in this jack will enable you to receive television programs or by attaching a general electric record player. You make this receiver a fine record reproducing instrument. <laughs> you do, eh? JK53 or 33? He's at 53, 80 watts. And look at this. It has an outlet on the back. And I'm floored. Look at the type of outlet. One of those um, 
slots is wider than the other one, just like modern, uh, you know, modern, like modern outlets. But, 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 but this was not a standard back then, I don't think. So, uh, exactly what's going on here, uh, I, I assume this is just the AC outlet for the record player. Maybe even your television set once they become available in your area. Uh, why polarized? Hmm. Uh, I don't know what to think there. Could be some kind of hum fight. Uh, you plug your. I don't know. <laughs> because plugs back then weren't polarized. So who's got a record player with a polarized plug? I guess it would have to be a general electric record player. Is that right? Is that who made this? Is it General Electric? Yes, General Electric. Okay, anything else back here worth looking at? I don't think so. What's that? Approved by the Hydroelectric Power Commission. So there was a time in Ontario where every new device that was going to be plugged into the power system, like a radio like this, had to be approved and what uh, the hydro company was concerned about, the power company, was uh, interference and things like that uh, and some safety issues around uh, these things being, you know, catching fire stuff of that sort. Okay, so that's their sticker saying it's okay. In the, uh, in the States, uh, it would be uh, underwriters laboratories that would do that kind of stuff. Okay, any reason why we wouldn't take this guy out of his cabinet now? And, uh, yeah, there is a reason. There is a reason. And the reason is the speaker. And the speaker is bolted to the cabinet. And, of course, there's wires going to the radio. They're only so long. There's a plug up here. Oh, the plug is almost out loose. Let's pull it out. Okay, so I'll be able to pull the chassis out. We'll probably have to pull out the speaker because I need the speaker to run the radio. The speaker does more than make sound in these radios. Okay. Uh, oh, the knob's off the front now. Okay. These. Making sure they aren't... Oh, they are. They are screwed on. Ooh. Good thing I didn't yank too hard on that. I'm really curious why those, why these are so loose. knobs off. Now, sometimes I flip these radios right on their side to get to the bottom. Other times I just hang them over the edge on the cliff. That's what I'm going to do with this one. Here the uh, cabinet's creaking, which means it's loose a little bit somewhere. Somewhere along the line, you might be able to put a little glue on it and fix it up. Here's the screw here. Now, this radio doesn't appear to have feet on the bottom. Let's, let's tip it and take a look, see what's up. Looks like it might have been a foot there, there. But right now it's just a flat piece of wood. Sometimes, you know, a screw or something will stick out on these. 
So you uh, innocently put it on top of something nice, and the next thing you know, it's all scratched up. What are all these extra holes here? Oh my gosh, do these go right up into the uh, into the IF? So you're trying to set this up so you can tune this radio up uh, while it's still in the cabinet. But, uh, you know, I just don't, you know, well, if all it's got on the side. Take this guy out. Now we're left with the one at the front. It's a three screw, three bolt radio. Okay, so getting that last screw out required me to go out and get my automotive ratchet set in here. Fit this bolt. So three of them are out. Radio should come out now. Let's see. Oh, I didn't like that sound. Well, what's going on here? The pointer is not coming along. So what's happened here? I didn't look close enough. The uh, pointer and the pointer slide mechanism, all that stuff, is fixed to the cabinet. I see there's a light down there too. Son of a gun! So what's happened is I yanked the pointer off the string. There's a mark on the string there. It's a little hard to see in the camera. If you look at the two, you can see two strings. The lower string has a little, that's actually a clean spot, and that's where the uh, pointer hooked up. So if I can put it back on where it was, I was really lucky there. Because uh, probably uh, three times out of five, you're going to break the string doing that, or do some other kind of damage. So lucky, lucky me. Okay, let's carry on. Okay, this comes out here. Looks like there's a sheet of asbestos under paper in here. As you can see here, the paper has been caught when somebody slid in the radio caught this paper and moved it up and that's the asbestos there and you can see it's it's uh, uh, it's the worst stuff okay it's, it's just all full of you see that it's all full of uh, little uh, fibers and stuff like that so this is not what you want to be goofing around with I'm just going to drop it back here and I'll bag it up in a minute I'm going to leave the rest of it alone though I concluded over the years that it's better to just leave the asbestos alone yeah, if it's in any kind of stable shape. So I'll get in here and vacuum this out. I'm looking for that uh, bar of gold. Always anticipating it's going to be in here. Of course, if I found a bar of gold, I'm afraid Mr. H is watching right now. So <laughs> I think he'd claim the bar of gold back from me so no bar of gold but it looks like a little piece of wire cover why that would be there I don't know okay now I have a chance to look underneath the radio chassis take a glance at what we got coming here okay so this radio looks like it's never been worked on at a glance. Um, I see uh, some molded, black molded capacitors here. Some cardboard covered larger capacitors. There's uh, 
molded capacitors here, wax capacitors. Actually, they're all kind of molded capacitors. You know what? These look like they're all replaced. This one certainly looks like it's a replacement. It's been resoldered here. So I take that back. I'm not the first guy to look in this radio. So we've got a pretty high wattage resistor here. Hard to say. These are probably original. These ones. Yeah. But, and this, you know, it looks different than all the rest, so this is probably a replacement. But maybe the rest are uh, originals. Wires aren't terribly stiff. No compound is leaked out of the transformer down here. Um, so I'm looking for any discolored components. Just looking for anything dramatic. And it's not. There's nothing too dramatic in here. Here's the outlet arrangement. And you can see the power cord goes straight to this outlet and then straight on into the transformer. So this is just totally live, not hooked to the switch or anything. Yeah, that's about it. So this, this coil here has an adjustment on the back apron. There's three capacitors to adjust they can only be accessed through the front of the radio. The only way you could do these is to have the uh, chassis out like I have it now. So, you know, what the advantages of having some holes underneath the cabinet so you can get, you can get you're going to try to slide a screwdriver all the way up into that little slot there from underneath the cabinet. I mean, that's, that's a screwdriver free shank distance like that. Come on. Good luck on that. And you're doing this with the radio on and there's high voltages right in here. So you're sticking a screwdriver trying to really get it really work like that. And look at this one here. It's hardly accessible with this capacitor where, where it's located. Green insulation. This green wires I found often are really really stiff and ready to crack. Green rubber for some reason. Um, in a radio like this, often the uh, color of the wires does mean something. Uh, quite often to the manufacturer, they specify what kind of wires used for what kind of circuit. So, you know, the high voltage is usually red. That's no surprise. The green is often some kind of signal wire. Um, I don't think there's any fixed rules on any of that. Okay, so I've stared in the back of this thing. Here's some more adjustments back here on the back apron. Stared at this long enough now, I think. Somebody's penciled in a note here. Probably the guy's initials. Who uh, inspected it. Number Inspector 17 checked out, I don't know what, why would he stamp? This is actually right on the, right on the transformer. Here's his stamp here. Looks like 1172V or something. So uh, that's some kind of uh, inspector certifying the radio is ready to go on to the next manufacturing step, whatever that might be. Well, why wouldn't we turn this on? Well, we wouldn't turn it on right now because I don't have the speaker plugged in, so I had to deal with that. Let's uh, let's take the speaker out. Looks like it's just one, two, three, three, three nuts, and out it comes. I think this is too small. Yeah, I have to use my ratchets again here.
speaker out. Not a very big speaker. Here. Good. Okay. Don't need the cabinet for anything at this point. Wow, you can see that. That you know, if you're gonna adjust. Like, uh, this radio has a challenge that comes with this this style of uh, of radio, and that is the pointer cannot be pointing at the dial while the chassis is out of the radio. So that might be a hint on what adjustments they've made available with the radio completely installed. It's probably oscillator adjustments, which control the position of the pointer. That's one way to look at it. That's probably what they've done in this case. And maybe the hint I could have picked up on was if there are some adjustments. Well, let's see. The two holes in the bottom of the cabinet are going for these two IF adjustments. That's not that's not the oscillator. And uh, there's one. There's a couple more on the back here. They're probably my guess is these will be access to the oscillator adjustments back here. Should, should, should be three adjustments for a three-band radio. Oh, there's another way they... <laughs> okay, and all that stuff I just said you can ignore because I see there's another thing they've done here. Uh, let's see if you can see it in this camera here. It's a little bit of a long shot, but on the back of the big wheel is uh, a scale. It's on here. Basically, it's a degree scale, starting at zero degrees here and 180 over there. So uh, I, I, I've seen this before, where you arrange a pointer, you actually get a piece of wire or something, and kind of bend it so that it's pointing up in the right spot. And then in the instructions, it'll say turn it to you know 50, and then do this, turn it to so and so. Okay, that's good. Just looking ahead, trying to figure out what I might be uh, into here. So let's plug the speaker in. I guess it's got to be down at this end of the radio. Let's get the cabinet. Come on, let's get the cabinet out of here before something sad happens. Okay. You know what, I'm gonna get the bigger I get the bigger platter out here. Gives me a lot more room. not to bend this wire. It's kind of what I'm trying to do, or bend it as little as possible. Okay, that's in. And we don't want the speaker to only flat like that. I don't want it just cracked open here a little bit. No spiders on this radio. Okay, I think we're set to... Hey, why were these things so loose? Because the shaft is a mile and a half long. That's all it is. Okay, that answers that question now. Oops. Plug them in. Now, this, the, the, the dumb thing about this, uh, shame on Mr. H, the owner, and me too, we actually never discussed this radio. <laughs> when, uh, when we brought it the other day, we got busy talking about everything else, 
So he never told me anything about it. How did it work? Yes or no? Does it work well or not? Uh, no discussion about it. So, but I'm pretty sure this is a working radio. We're going to find out in a moment. That's the so the off switch is off. The camera angle is off. Let's get things a little better here. So you can see this this switch. This is powers off right now. So this switches between having the lights in the circuit and the lights not in the circuit. So when this is up, it's full power here. These lights are out of the circuit and that's off. So first we apply power with no with the switch off to make sure the switch works. Okay, and I'm gonna cut the power here, turn it on here. So this light may go, these lights should come on and then go down and then come back up a bit. That's what they should do. Come on. Go down. Well, they never went down. So, um, I have some meters here that can help me assess what the voltage is. Along with directly reading it, if it's not too low, 65 volts to the radio. That's quite low for a radio. Um, yeah, 65 volts. That's all I need to look at. How many watts is this thing drawing now? 30 watts. It's drawing about, you know, roughly half what it's supposed to draw. So, uh, I, think, uh, I think it's doing what it's supposed to do. That's, that's quite a draw for a little radio. I don't think we're going to hear anything at this voltage level. Um, well, the lights aren't on 100%. There isn't a full short in here. Um, it's just a touch uncomfortable here. Here, give a full power. See what happens. Okay, speed, it's coming on. So that ticking and now the uh, what do you call that buzzing? That's probably coming from inside the radio. Must be volume and on off volume. We don't know what band we're on here. There's no antenna connected to this. There's no built in antenna or any antenna connected now. So shouldn't expect much. This tone doesn't seem to do anything. Volume is full. Let's turn it down a bit. It's quite the quite the, the hum coming out of it. Let's try this antenna wire. So that now that uh, noise you hear, uh, you know what? A lot of radios make that sound in my shop, and I'm always asking myself, geez, is it coming out of the radio or is it being picked up by the radio? I think it's, it's got to be picked up. Otherwise we'd hear it without a, my finger on the antenna, wouldn't we?
definitely some weird moments in there. Uh, just tuning that around. So I'm willing to bet this is AM. Let's put a uh, antenna on it. More of an antenna anyway. Here's where the pointer is sliding, right here, I believe. What just happened? Here we go again. So, that ticking that just disappeared. Is that this radio? <laughs> My gosh. That's a big difference getting rid of it. Whatever it was. What's that? Come on. Tubes are a little hot here. So this tube over here is actually on a rubber mount. So this 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 ground wire is lost its insulation right through this hole and is contacting the chassis probably wouldn't matter anyway for a number of reasons, but probably this just goes to a chassis terminal anyway. Heard that before on the radio. So I'm looking around to see if I've got some equipment left on in here, but no. I don't think that's caused by the radio itself. Just, just wait here for one moment. Okay, so I brought another radio in. Just a regular everyday radio. AM, we're at a 6, can you see that? 680 area. So we're at one end of the band. Which end of the band are we at? Let me just take a peek at the cabinet here. Okay, so with the pointer here, we're at the low end of the band. Most radios work like that. 
don't hear any of that. Uh, it's the other end of the radio band now. Well, I don't hear that. that that's strange. Could be, could be coming in on my antenna. Nope, definitely not. In fact, antenna is making zero difference. Oh, makes a big difference there. That's no antenna now. short the antenna right to the chassis here. Fix it. <laughs> okay, so here's my question. As I as I tune across here, and the antenna now amounts to this yellow piece of wire shorted to the chassis. So the antenna is really quite quite shorted out. What is this thing picking up? What's that? Maybe, maybe the signal, here's my theory. I have a new theory I am willing to share with you. Uh, why did some of these radios I do in my shop, they seem to receive and cut through the noise, the typical noise in a house like mine these days, computer noise and that. They seem to cut through it, and where there's a nice AM radio signal, they seem to pick it up clear. And in between stations, there's not a lot of noise. The other radios just seem to be overwhelmed with noise. I cannot seem to get rid of it. Some of the radios that are noise-free are actually the simpler radios without a front-end tube, which is really surprising. The front-end tube helps helps with interference and, uh, and the like. Here's my theory. My theory is the signals are being picked up by the radio, not necessarily from the antenna, but being picked up directly 
inside the radio, inside components, poorly shielded things, uh, wires like going to the speaker, wherever they might be, picking up interference signals and feeding them into the radio in spots all over the place. And that's why with some radios, no matter how much I try, I cannot solve their noise sensitivity because it's inherent. There you go. How do you like that? Fix it again. It's inherent in the design of the radio. Perhaps a, a chassis with no metal bottom. I, I don't know. It's just my it's just my theory on why some radios I cannot quiet down. Now could the same thing be happening here? Where I've tried to short the antenna out, and we're still picking stuff up. Uh, because the signals are actually able to get into the radio in places other than the antenna. That's my theory. That's my question. That's my that's my hypothesis. So throughout a radio there are capacitors installed that are designed to uh, short out any uh, RF signals that have gotten onto the wire that the capacitor is attached to. So if you have certain wires that are you're worried are going to become antennas or maybe feeding actual radio signals back and forth inside the radio inappropriately, you can quiet them by sticking a capacitor to the uh, to, to ground and then those signals will you can think of it as going through the through the you can think of it that way that they go through the capacitor into into the chassis it's not quite accurate I think but the effect is the same those capacitors get weak and maybe you can't quiet some of those uh, wires and the next thing you know one of them becomes an antenna and picks up all kinds of interference driving me totally nuts what happened there? I just tapped this. So I'm pretty sure we've got bad contact in the volume control here. It's, it's misbehaved a couple of times. Boy, that almost sounded like somebody's voice, didn't it? It's just. Yeah, I think these controls are just dirty. We clean them up and they probably won't be a problem after that. The uh, band switch seems pretty good, from what I can tell. Hey, we can try some short wave here. I've got a yikes! Got an antenna. Oh! 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 you need to put on there 55 degrees 60 degrees 67 degrees 16 we've got this hot tube this hot tube blasting away onto this guy let's go over this side here. 69 okay that's just too hot overheating Okay, um, so, not to panic, I should have read the power consumption on the watt meter here uh, while the radio was operating. So I'm going to turn it back on and, uh, and it's not going to heat up that much more. And we'll measure the wattage, the watt drain on here. It's 108 watts right now. 110, 112. Hundred and ten watts on an eighty watt radio. Uh, that's why this is hot. Uh, what's going on? There's got to be current. Uh, current. More, there's got to be more current in this radio than there's supposed to be. So we don't want to overheat this any hot. Wow! Boy, boy, boy! That is hot. That is hot. Too hot. What about this guy? Now this can get hot too. This. So I wouldn't call this hot. It's got a little bit of heat in it. 
Okay, uh, any other observations we need to make here before we start actually working on it? So this light appears to be a dud. Let's just check it. And uh, The little lights on the front of the radio can be very helpful in a shop environment by keeping you mindful that the radio is on, switched on. If you don't have any sound coming out of the speaker, and you don't have a light on, it's pretty easy to forget. Pretty easy for me. Okay, so this uh, this light, that's my ohm meter there. You can see a one on it. It's a dud. Doesn't work. I'll stick another light in there. And that should help out. Otherwise, I think we're ready to start. Whew. She's a hot one. Hey, you know what would be real interesting on this radio? That's to fire it up on uh, high voltage DC from my uh, DC power supply up here and see what kind of current leaks into the radio. Maybe we can spot already why this guy is getting so hot. Um, I just don't want to uh, disturb these wires here. So what have I got? Let's put this like this. Let's tip this up like this. There. I think it's going to spend a lot of its time up like this from here on in. Yeah, I'll, I'll get the DC supply ready. That's, that's this guy way up here. And we'll, we'll fire him up on just my own shop supply. See what happens. Okay, without resorting to the uh, schematic just yet, let's see what we can figure out here. So the uh, capacitor is here, by the way. Capacitor has heat in it. Um, just, you know, everything's a little warm now. I don't wonder if that's heating up on its own. So here's the bottom of the capacitor. A couple things we see right away. This resistor, a, what's that, a two watt resistor? It's a little higher wattage resistor hooked up to the capacitor here. We see one wire leaving this terminal and going to this uh, IF can. Okay, and we see another wire going from here over to this tube. This tube is the rectifier. You can see the transformer wires all feeding down into it. And you can see there's a number of pins missing. Uh, rectifier. You can see these wires are red. This wire is bare, and it goes to this tube. This tube is the output tube that's driving the speaker. So from those observations, you can kind of reach the conclusion that this is the original positive feed from the rectifier tube. This is the first section that uh, fights the hum here. Um, this wire is probably heading out this hole and heading for the speaker or field coil. The field coil is returning probably here. I can't, I can't see the wires, but probably it comes here. Maybe not. Uh, so th this is going to be high voltage, uh, you know, 200, 250, 300. This is going to be high voltage, uh, probably similar. And this guy here is the capacitor that's helping bypass the uh, bias, um, the cathode bias resistor that's here on this tube. I got this right. So I'm looking now for a fairly high wattage resistor which I do not see. So I may not have that quite right. But I think this is a bypass capacitor part. What's it say on the capacitor itself? Oh my gosh, it's going to be impossible to read all that in there. So I'd have to look at the schematic and see what that... Uh, that's got to be the case though. You wouldn't normally This could be a grounded terminal right here. All this stuff connected to it and these capacitors hooked up to it. Wouldn't normally have a, have a, a, a resistor going from the positive here. So what I'm looking at is where am I going to hook up my external power supply to fire this guy up? And the answer is one lead onto the chassis. Okay, and the positive lead 
right onto this terminal here. This should send DC power into the radio just as if the radio itself is producing it, except it's not being produced by the radio, it's being produced by my power supply way up there. Oh, you can actually see the meters up there, so I'm going to leave it like that. That's a current meter that we want to keep an eye on. This is the voltage being pumped into the radio. I'll put this on standby right now. So my expectation is I should be able to raise this up to 200 volts fairly easily. 200 would be straight up here. And at that point, there should be this pointer should be pretty much where it is now, sitting on zero. It may be up a couple milliamps. Shouldn't be too much more than that. While I'm turning the voltage up, each time I turn it up, a new charge will flow into the filter capacitors, and that charge will cause the current meter to go up while the current flows. So every time I turn the voltage up, this meter should pop up and go down, pop up and go down, pop up and go down. It might be a very small amount. If in the end, when we're all done, we've got 200 volts here and we've got 15, 20 milliamps here, I think I think we've identified a problem at that point. Are we all set? And the, the radio cannot come on during this. I mean, it will not come on. That's not, that's not what's happening here. Here we go. Okay, I'll start advancing the voltage up and watch this meter. So we're at 200 volts and the meter has come right back to zero. So that tells me that if there is a uh, extra load on this transformer and making it hot, wow, it's even hotter now. Um, and that would be the heat built up inside making it out to the outer shell where I can, can feel it. Um, let's just put this like this before I get in trouble. There's something bogus about the test I just did? No, I don't think so. Zero leakage in the high voltage circuits. Well, then it remains to be seen what it is that could be making that transformer so hot. I, I, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know, because what does a transformer do anyway? It feeds low voltage to the heaters of the tubes. Could, could that be out of whack? Not very likely. It also feeds uh, high voltage through the power supply to all the tubes, to the plates on the tubes. And what else does that transformer do? In this radio, it's probably nothing. It's probably just just does that. How many wires are coming out here? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so there's there's more wires coming out than that. So there's something else going on with it. What else could be going on with it? I think it's time to look at the schematic. So maybe this is as far as we're going to get today, looking at this radio. Next thing we'll do is we'll go over the schematic in detail and then we'll be ready to actually start doing some real work on this uh, on this radio. But a little bit of asbestos sitting here. Okie dokie. Thanks so much for watching and uh, I'll see you on the uh, Next uh, video, probably tomorrow. Bye.